Will Hollywood Brown break Ravens single season receiving yards record? Is Lamar Jackson getting the Cam Newton treatment when it comes to the refs not calling these late hits? Is the Ravens lack of speed outside of Tyson Williams a concern moving forward at the running back position? These and many, many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to y'all, and just really shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean as a whole. We got some fire questions as we always do, because y'all always bring it. Let's do it. First question came from my guy Howard S. He said, what's happening in Graven? I was just thinking that since EDC took over as GM, he implemented a very strong analytics system into the Raven system. And I have no problem with the analytics when it comes to crunching the numbers uh, and statistics and things of that nature. But I'm not a fan of analytics being the call of in of football game decisions. Football decisions should be made from the feeling of the pulse of the team, understanding the momentum of the game and having a strong feel for the situations of the game. I believe EDC got Harbaugh and his staff a little too gassed up in the analytics and that causes them to make unnecessary decisions at times. It's just my opinion. I'm curious to know what your thoughts on this topic are. Hashtag Ravens Nation. And yes, analytics have certainly taken over the game of football. And you see them, uh, some teams use them more than others. But definitely the Ravens, they love their analytics. And it's, I feel like it can be a gift and a curse. Because I feel like with analytics, yeah, it shows you numbers and percentages and probabilities and this and that. But at the same time, you got you to gotta take the eye test. You got to look at it with the eye test and be like, okay. Because every situation, yeah, different situations, they're, they're different, like I said, probability rates with this situation on this fourth down and this third down and long and this and all that stuff. But you got to actually look at it. You, you can't forget about the game. You got to think about momentum. You got to think about how things are going for you currently in the game. You got to think about the, the players, how they respond to this. And it's, it's just... It's so much stuff in the game. It's a game within a game. Um, and analytics, to me, they can't tell the whole story. They, they, they just don't. So you got to make football decisions based off of football itself and not just the numbers. Next question came from my guy, Mayor Dabo. He said, do you think Hollywood Brown will break the franchise single season receiving record? Uh, the record is 1,201 yards originally set by Michael Jackson <laughs> back in 1996. Hmm. Well... Um, he certainly could. Uh, I think he is on pace too. But see the thing: um, if he does, let's see how he does it and how long it takes him to do it. Because one of the reasons I say he definitely could, um, and this is not just because I'm a big Hollywood fan and nothing like that, but it's 17 games. It's 17 games this year, so that's an, a whole extra game to get a bunch of yards. So really, with um, with a lot of these a lot of these records in NFL are going to be broken. A lot of them are going to be demolished because of the extra game, and then soon enough, it's going to end up being eighteen games. So and then a, a bunch of these sixteen and seventeen uh, scheduled games, those records are going to be broken too. So it's bound to happen. Uh, whether Hollywood does it this year, that would be great because that would mean that he's catching a lot of passes and getting a lot of yards. So. We wouldn't complain if he does. Next question came from my boy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, how's everything on your side? Oh, everything is good. He said, what's up with them making Tyson a healthy scratch? I mean, Bell was okay. Good blocks in a passing game. That's cool. But I'm not going to lie. I still would have liked to see him playing aside from fantasy purposes, LOL, and have Bell, Murray, and Freeman spell. Well, no, you can't have all the running backs active. I, I expected it to be uh, Le'Veon Bell and um, Latavius Murray. And that's it. Well, and Tyson Williams, but not Freeman. But the fact that when they deactivated uh, Tyson Williams, like you, you dropped your most explosive runner. So anyway, we'll see how what happens against the Colts. He said, which leads me into my second question. I know I'm jumping ahead, but after our Super Bowl run and Tyson and them light up the NFL, what are we going to do next year when Gus and JK come back? We are back to 2021. What are your thoughts on that? I think they're going to get Tyson stock through the roof and then flip him. They could do that, but. 
I don't think they would. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. If you flip Tyson Williams, you let him go, what happens? Because you, you got two running backs both coming back from ACL injuries. Now, the ACL injuries both happened before the season, so that will have given them plenty of time uh, to recover and get right. But you don't know how their bodies are going to respond to those injuries yet. So you can't just be like, all right, we got both of them back. All right, Tyson, you out. We, we, we trading you for this and that. And not saying that it couldn't happen, but you would much rather keep a Tyson Williams and maybe even keep a Le'Veon Bell, depending, depending on how the season goes. It's, it's, it's still super early. But depending on how the season goes, but you you, you don't want to just fully rely on Gus and J.K., especially with both of them coming back from ACL injuries. Uh, so it's important that the Ravens are really smart with that. Uh, he says, same with wide receiver. Insert eyes emoji. LOL. Literally everybody is producing and is Boykin and Bateman. can If they can just be solid at the least. Man, we are in the same problem, which is crazy because this speaks to Giro in them. No knock to our boys because I love them all, but let's be real. A lot of them wouldn't start on other teams especially uh, the line, but they are making everything and everybody look good. Might be a reach, but it's a guy in New England that gets caught in a scandal every other year, LOL, but drafts for situations and uses each player in different ways to be productive. They are never the best, but in their system, they are the best. They say that that's the best coach ever. It looks like Giro is doing the same thing. The Broncos game said it all, and Giro certainly has been uh, killing it this year so far. So we, we've been definitely appreciating everything that he's been on. So shout out to Giro. And he said, hey, have you noticed every time we play a mobile quarterback, they have a way in this hybrid do-it-all position on passing downs and every time in crunch time, and it works. He chips the closest person, rushes, and drops back covering his section while spying. Literally every game and every game he made a big play doing so. It's a Dafe away. And well, he did let it be known in that press. He said, I don't want to just be known as, as no uh, pass rushing specialist. And he's showing that he's not just a pass rushing specialist, but he's a football specialist. Next question came from my boy Jeff J. He said, if I remember correctly, Brian Billick pulled Jamal Lewis out of a game where he could have had the all-time single season record for yards. Everyone despised him for that. Now, I have no issue with Lamar going for tying the record. He could have scrambled for 60 yards throughout the game, but he didn't. Fangio was slash is stepping on our sour grapes that aren't there. Oh, yeah, that, um... With the whole Fangio thing, like, he, again, we, we saw the play. The, the play's been floating around from last season when the Broncos were up. Uh, it was against the Dolphins. And on a fourth down, at the end of the game, the very end of the game, they throw a deep ball to, uh, I think, to Corlin Sutton. But they, they Broncos, they threw a deep ball. So it's like, you, you did the same thing. And you weren't going for no record. So, it, like, the, 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 the Broncos, they, they didn't have any room to talk. And speaking of that Broncos game, next question came from my boy Gus. See, he said at the end of the game, the Ravens ran the ball for 100 yards. Do you think that that's a greedy move? No, not one bit, not at all. They, it was, again, it wasn't to be greedy. It was to just try to go to tightest record. And this record with, what, 43 games in a row where you ran for over 100 yards? You know how many seasons 43 games is? How, how many seasons is that? It was 16 games in a season. 16 times 2 uh, is, what, 32? Oh, is it 32? Yeah, 32. And then times 3 is 48. So there, this, this thing took two and a half seasons uh, to get done. Why do I feel like my math was wrong? But anyway, it, it took two and a half seasons to get done. And you think, oh, man, the game's over. You know, we got three seconds. Let's just – no, go for the record. Go for the record. So, no, it wasn't greedy. Next question came from my guy, William J. He said, is it Cam Newton all over again? Oh, let's see where this is going. He said, what's good, Engraving? Quick question. What's your thoughts on these late hits on Lamar Jackson and they're not getting flags? Do you feel like the officials are treating Lamar Jackson like they treated Cam Newton in his Carolina campaign? Looking forward to your response and keep it clean. Oh, yes, I wish the Broncos would have kept them hits clean. And yes, that um, it does seem like that because it, it happens a lot of times. It's, it's weird because quarterbacks that are really good runners – the NFL treats them like they're running backs in the backfield and doesn't protect them. And it could be a way of the NFL being like, hey, you want to be a good runner like that? Okay, you're going to pay for it. You're going to get hit. Because they like, we, yeah, thank you for bringing that up because the same thing happened with Cam Newton. Same thing. Same exact, like, man, like they, he wasn't getting nothing called for him. So it, it, it just is it's frustrating to see it because obviously Lamar is a quarterback and the NFL, they, they usually protect their quarterbacks. And I mean, you would think Lamar, Lamar is big money. He's big money. 
He be, be bringing you in a lot of revenue in NFL, so you would definitely want to protect him like you protect all these other guys. But they don't. They don't. And it, it, it's, it's so clear, too, that they don't, especially in that Bronco. Like, we all saw it. I didn't see it live, but when I saw the replay, I was like, what? I couldn't believe that. And it happened multiple times. And guys were, were intentionally trying to hurt Lamar. I'm like, wow. That's how y'all get down Broncos? <laughs> and y'all y'all talking about uh, safety for the Ravens in secondary? I think y'all need to take a look at the replay. And the last question on this episode, a question from subscribers, came from my boy Ricky B. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Ricky? He said, I have a point to bring up about our running back situation. I noticed that we lack speed and burst at the running back position. Well, they certainly lacked that when they had Tyson Williams inactive because he brings that speed and burst. But let's continue. He said, uh, with JK and Gus, we had lightning and thunder. None of these backs except for Williams. Okay, he put that in there. None of these backs except for Williams is able to burst to the edge. That's true. Do you think this is a concern moving forward? Yes, if they continue to have Williams in the doghouse, it, it would be. It certainly would be because, yeah, to the, to the edge, to the outside, these running backs ain't got it. So, anyway. Um, secondly, secondly, I think Makari has been holding it down at right tackle. Yes, 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 yes. Um, he said, we just need Ronnie back. I have faith that we will figure out the left tackle situation for this season. But right now, it's low-key a yikes. Hopefully, Villanueva's injury wasn't anything too serious. They said it wasn't, but by the time you see this video, because I'm recording this on Thursday, uh, it's 1028 a.m., so they haven't practiced today yet. Um, and they haven't publicly practiced this week yet. So today will be the first day of their public practice. So we'll, by the time you see this video, we'll know the status of Villanueva. But Harbaugh did say it wasn't anything serious. Like, he really made it sound like it wasn't anything serious. So hopefully, that's true. Um, but we'll, you, you'll know by the time you see this. Anyway, he said, uh, when Lamar has time, he is deadly in whatever he chooses to do. Yes, that's true. That's why I, I really wish this offensive line could get it together. The whole offensive line. You know, bits and pieces got it together. Like Bozeman and Makari, they've been doing their thing. But other, I just I wish the whole offensive line could get it together. So, because like, like you just said, when Lamar has time, he is deadly in whatever he chooses to do. And that is so true. I said, oh, man. Anyway, he said, lastly, I noticed that Lamar uh, is talking to linemen and receivers, maybe hot routes or audibles, pre-snap. These resulted in chain-moving plays. Do you think Lamar is starting to get a more command of the offensive play calling? Thanks for all that you do. Peace. Uh, he certainly he certainly should be. I mean, you you getting ready soon enough. You're getting ready to be the highest-paid quarterback in the league. Soon. Well, and if not the highest, then second highest. But, so, yeah, you, you, you definitely uh, – should be and would be expected to be having more control of the offense. So uh, if he's doing all that pre-snap, talking to receivers, and, you know, he'd be moving people around, putting people in motion and whatnot, getting people lined up. If, if somebody don't know where they're supposed to go, Lamar be like, no, 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 go over here. So that's expected because Lamar, as a quarterback, not every quarterback is a leader. So let's clear that up. Because just because you are the quarterback of the team, it does not make you the leader because you could be a backup. You could be just – being in for a little bit you could be only there because somebody got hurt and you're not expected to be the long-term answer but lamar jackson is certainly a leader certainly the leader of the ravens certainly the leader of this team and yeah this is this is his squad